In this video, I want to show how to build a simple activity that connects a graph with some student input, and it will ask a question about transformations. I'm just going to call it transformations. And I want to include, like I said, a, a graph component. I want to include a note component and a component for student input. And I'm going to change the student input to a math format because I want the student to input a formula that will then show up on the graph. So the question to prompt the student will be about a transformation. The function, and now to name the function, I'm going to call it g of x. I can create a math formatting by clicking on the f of x button in the bottom. The function g of x is formed by translating the function, and now this time I'm going to call the function f of x, the absolute value of x, right three units and up one unit. And then to prompt the input, maybe I'll add enter the formula for the g of x function. Again, to create math formatting, we can click on the little f of x button in the bottom, uh, bottom right. So now I want to connect the components and build them together a little bit. So I want to give the graph a name. I'm going to call it graph1. And I'm going to give the input box a name. I'll call it input1. So that in the computation layer script, the different components can identify each other. Uh, clicking on the graph component, I can enter the function f of x equals the absolute value of x. And I'll turn that into a dotted line. So the student will see that. And then they'll add the function g of x to the graph. So I'm just going to put in a line here, y equals g of x. It gives a little warning triangle because it doesn't know what that g refers to but we're going to define g in the computation layer. So now I'm going to click Done. And now I'd like to connect the graph with the input component and graph the formula that the student types in there. So to do that, I'm going to click on this little gray gear, which takes me to the computation layer script. And we're going to define a function and call it g. ending that with a colon and the function is created with the command simple function and we can get the input by accessing input one dot latex so now if i click done and go to the preview screen i can enter in a formula and a graph will appear. So at this point, we have an activity that functions. I want to add a couple things, though. We can add an initial statement to the input box to prompt the student with g of x function notation. And we can also add some tools that will check the work of the student. So if I go to the gear, here of the input component, I can open up the CL script, and one of the options is initial LaTeX, and I simply want g of x equals. So now if we go to preview, we can see the input box has that g of x equals. But now you might notice that the parentheses around the x in the note for g of x versus in the input statement are a little bit different. We can change that and make them maybe look a little bit better, function a little bit better if we go back to the CL script. And then instead of just this basic text, I can add the LaTeX command with a double backslash and left and the double backslash and right. It will treat those parentheses more like containers and adjust them to the size of the expression that's inside. 
And so now looking at the preview, we see a slightly different form and kind of a nicer format for that g of x. And now I'd like to create an automated check on the student's input. So I'm going to go to the graph and enter the formula that I would want the students to enter. I'm going to call it h of x. And the formula should be the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1. I don't want that to actually appear on the graph, but I'm going to use it to compare with the g of x function. And so to make that comparison, I'm going to create some numbers i sub 1 equals, and then in braces, I'm going to type the absolute value of g of x. Uh, sorry, of g of 3, let's say, minus h of 3. So that will compare the value of the two formulas at 3, where the vertex should be. And I want that to be the same, essentially, but to give a little bit of a tolerance, I'm going to say it should be less than 0 0.0001. And then with a colon, I can assign the value 1 if that statement is true, and 0 otherwise. And now this just tests and compares the functions at that one point. It's not a guarantee that this student's input is correct. But what I can do is copy this and repeat it for different input values. Let's say negative 4.1 for both of those. Negative 4.1 would be another point that I would check. Let me call that I sub 2. And then for i sub 3, how about 3.14? And so in these three places, I'm comparing the h of x graph and the g of x graph. And if they're the same, it's a pretty good indication that the student's input is the correct one. I actually don't want these numbers to appear. that They show up sort of as horizontal lines on the graph. Uh, but let me get rid of those. But they're here, and I can refer to them from other components. So let me go out from here. And there is one thing I want to add to the graph script. I'm going to uh, click on the gear there. I want to add the statement read only true, because I'm actually going to check that graph condition in the input statement. So this is sort of handing control over to that other component. And now in the script for the input statement, this is where I'm going to test to see whether the input is correct. So I'm going to type correct and then introduce the logic statement. I'm going to grab some numbers from the graph. So graph1.number. And the number is going to be what we created. So i sub 1 in quotation marks, and I want that to be equal to 1. And now we created three of these check numbers, and so let me copy that statement and use an AND connector to test all three of them. So changing the subscript to i sub 3 and i sub 2. And so if all three of those check numbers are where they should be, then the student's input should be recorded as correct. So let me go to the preview now and take a look. So if I enter the formula, absolute value of x minus 3, I can see there's a little x up here, because that's not quite the right thing. If I add a plus 1, that x becomes a check mark. And that's something that the teacher will see on the dashboard. It's not something that this, the student will see. And finally, of course, I could add a title, transforming functions, and save my work or publish it.